السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه وبعد all praises due to Allah alone we all praise him and we seek his help whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves us say none can show him guidance may the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم my dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of Ask Kuda during another blessed month of Ramadan. May Allah accept from all of us. Today is the 13th day of the blessed month of Ramadan. With a new Ask Kuda, the first question, um, after I remind you with our uh, phone numbers and the contact information, today is the 14th of Ramadan, I record 002, then 023 131 area code 002 then 01005469323 we've got two whatsapp numbers area code 0013478026125 and finally area code 0013614891503 we're live on my page am salah official as well as ask a muslim page the first question is from uh, Sister Husna, who is asking during Ramadan <coughs> if the days of menses increase. But later that you find out that it was non menstruation blood, is kafara required on her? No. In this case, what will be required is only making up those days. And if the bleeding of the minister wishes is continuous, <coughs> then you should perceive it as menses as well. But if it was interrupted, then a clear discharge has been experienced. Then you have seen spotting afterward or even bleeding that is called istihada or an irregular bleeding. It should not stop you from fasting, from praying or from performing tawaf. So if you realize that you should have been fasting, in this case, if you did not fast, what you owe is making up those days after the month of Ramadan is over. Barakallahu feekum. Fintau, Nuri Fintau is asking during fasting day, cleaning teeth in the afternoon, is it allowed or not? Yes, it is allowed to brush your teeth, clean up your teeth, use the miswak to brush your teeth uh, before noon, after noon, and throughout the day. There is no restriction in this regard. The purpose is to purify one's mouth and to remove the offensive smell, even though you're fasting. And this smell before Allah is really appreciated, but before people it is offensive. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about the miswak, which was the known toothbrush back then, matharatu lil fam, mardatu lil rab. It's a mean of purifying and cleansing one's mouth, and meanwhile, it is a mean of bringing pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He will be pleased when you purify yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our first caller today. Lean from Bangladesh. Welcome to Ask with a Lean. Okay, okay. Please proceed on Lean. Go ahead. What is your question? Okay, Lean will have to skip this call and inshallah try again. And uh, this is a friendly reminder. Once you pick up the phone, and once you're transferred to the live show, go ahead and present your question immediately for the sake of time, inshallah. Brother Ahmed, or Muhammad actually from Somalia, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, my name is Muhammad. I'm calling from Somalia. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome uh, to Ask Koda. My question is... <clears throat> Give him another chance. Muhammad, go ahead. My question is, um, if I'm taking ablution, um, and water goes on my mouth without the intent of swallowing it, would my first break or not? Okay. I got your question, Muhammad. Thank you. If somebody is performing wudu ablution while gaggling or washing his or her mouth, some water got into their stomach by uh, accident. Are they blameworthy? Do they have to make up fasting of the day? No, they don't have to because it was done by mistake. It wasn't deliberate. And in this regard, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recommended while performing wudu to do the excessive and extensive rinse in the mouth and blow in the nose. بالغ في المضمضة والاستنشاق ما لم تكن صائمة provided you're not fasting so if you're fasting you should be very moderate and make certain that the water would not go through to your stomach so only rinse your mouth moderately to avoid breaking your fast but if it was done by mistake the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith رُفِعَ عَنْ أُمَّتِي الْخَطَأْ وَالنِّسْيَانْ وَمَا اسْتُكْرِهُ عَلَيْهِ there are three conditions where a person will not be held accountable for their wrongdoing. If anything that they do by accident or by mistake, it was not deliberate, like your case, or due to forgetfulness, or if the person is forced and there is a life threat, you either do this or you will get killed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kifaya from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum kifaya. Um, Sheikh, please, I have some questions here. And as a couple who have like three to four children and um, plan to have medication to prevent them from having another pregnancy. So I want to know if it's okay, because some scholar says it's wrong, that Allah is the only planner. And I believe Allah gave us some capacity to do some things and leave the rest for him. So what can you say to this? And another question is, as a young lady who is practicing Islam and is Sunnah and looking towards to get married to a man who is, um, who is following the Sunnah, but unfortunately the ones coming around are those who are out of the Sunnah or follows the one that convenient for them. So should she keep waiting or can she go ahead and marry even though it's not doing this soon or since everybody did is for he or for her okay. and the last question is mm -hmm. islamically is it permissible to donate like blood or kidney what does islam says about this jazakallah wa iyaakum kifaya from nigeria uh, thank you so if a woman has four kids and she wants to take a break from having kids um, in order to be capable to raise those four kids, family planning in this case or taking the pills or whatever, safe means in order to give you a gap, a couple years to take a break is definitely permissible. The scholars say what is not permissible is to seize a pregnancy forever because this is something uh, it's a gift from Allah and they come with their provision sometimes the doctor the obstetrician says that because you've been doing c-section this is the fourth time you cannot afford to have a fifth time so we have to do something about it that too is permissible when you speak about the capacity and health wise uh, all those reasons are valid reasons what is not valid is when people fear that their kids would share food with them and poverty because the Quran tells us that it is Allah who provides for them and for us and also he said in another ayah we provide for you and we provide for them 
So if it is to keep a gap between the pregnancy in order to be capable to breastfeed and raise your kids, that too is acceptable. Consult your doctor in this regard. An important observation I like to share with all the viewers when our sister said that everyone has a capacity and will leave the rest for Allah. This is a common phrase that the Arabs say it and the non-Arab likewise say it. And this phrase is false and it shouldn't be uh, said by a Muslim. Because when you say, I do my best and I leave to the rest to Allah, well, it's like, you know, what you're doing is your capacity and the rest is Allah's capacity. In fact, whatever I do and whatever I and others do is all by the leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without his help, without his support, I couldn't have done it. So it's all for Allah. Okay? And you don't just leave the rest for him to take care of it. Everything, every deed, entirely. When I study and I study very hard and I say, I did my best. I'm ready for the exam and I leave the rest for Allah. No. Even my studying and comprehending what I studied was by the leave of Allah. Allah is the one who enabled me to do that. So I talk only about my capacity. Health capacity, financial capacity, physical capacity and so on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Waqif from India. Assalamu alaikum. Go ahead, Waqi. Uh, Sheikh, I want to ask you uh, this. I have a property, and my father had made a mosque of this property. But, but the mosque was not running. Okay. Yeah, okay. So the masjid was not running. Then what? Yeah. Sell this property. And this cannot be sold without the, that part of the land. So is it permissible that I sell it from here and I make it somewhere else? Absolutely not. Selling a masjid or a property of a masjid or a property on which masjid was erected and built is not permissible to sell or to change the nature of its duty. It's a masjid. It cannot be changed. It cannot be sold. Barakallahu feek. And that's a waqf. Endowment that was done by your dad. Thank you, Waqif. And your name is Waqif. You know, the Waqif is a person who endows, who makes a Waqf for Allah's sake. Assalamu alaikum. Rushdiya from Sri Lanka. Sister Rushdiya, Assalamu alaikum. Rushdiya, you have another phone? Assalamu alaikum. Permissible in Islam uh, to get a donated sperm and get pregnant when husband is um, not fit in health. Yes, All right. Thank you, Sister Rujdiya from Sri Lanka. Subhanallah, I make yes. dua for Sri Lankan Muslims in my prayer, in my sujood, and um, especially nowadays. And I'm, call, I'm glad that uh, one sister from Sri Lanka called to remind all the viewers, our brothers and sisters in Sri Lanka are going through a very, very tough time. May Allah bring peace to Sri Lanka and make Muslims enjoy peace and security, Muslims and non-Muslims in Sri Lanka alike. But we need to pray a lot for our brothers and sisters in Sri Lanka. Barakallah fikum. So sister... Uh, Rujdiya have asked about sperm donation, okay, if her husband is not capable to impregnate his wife due to health reasons. We'll answer this inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Abdul Razak from Uganda. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? I'm doing just fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. How about uh, yourself? Sheikh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, Sheikh, did you bring... Uh... Hello? I'm listening. Uh, a, uh, a friend of mine was asking me a question. So, like, he's a Christian friend. Uh, the question was that uh, in Surah Al-Maryam, it's only one angel that spoke to Maryam. Then in Surah Al-Imran, there are multiple angels that spoke to Maryam. 
Mm. So how would I answer back that question? Okay. Barakallah yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's a good question. Okay. So we have uh, Kifaya from Nigeria. She also asked about marrying somebody who is following the Sunnah or not following the Sunnah. And, and, and I want to say that the Prophet وسلم, put certain criterions for choosing the life mate, for a husband to choose his wife and for a wife to choose her future life mate, the husband. The religious commitment is essential. And what matters most that the religious commitment is to be perceived correctly. Because in the mind of many people, this person is religiously committed because he goes to the masjid, he comes from the masjid. He's wearing a thick beard and he's wearing a thawb. Are these indications enough to determine whether this person is religiously committed or not? No, not at all. What matters most is the person prays, alhamdulillah. He's very kind to his parents. He's very gentle with his brothers and sisters, with his siblings. His neighbors say that we never heard any bad about him. At work, he doesn't take bribery. And he comes on time and he leaves on time. He's committed. This is a good person. Even if he is, when it comes to the sunan, he's lagging behind. He's not that perfect. You know, he can grow up together. But those who aim for a person, mashallah, he's working in da'wah. He's a long beard, big turban. This is good for himself. I want to see how good would that, be per would, uh, would that person be for me, for others. And that would be, recognized through examining his relationship with others, how he treats others, relatives, parents, siblings, neighbors, co-workers. This is very, very important. Also, brothers and sisters, when somebody asks, when, you know, revert girls ask me to be their guardian, and I interview, you know, proposers and um, people who are proposing to them. When, when somebody who doesn't have a job, and he has not been working for the past several years because you can figure out that this person isn't into working. You know, so I excuse myself and say, well, we're not interested. We need a man who is responsible to shoulder his financial responsibility. A lot of youth, a lot of men, they just rely on, my wife is well off, her father is rich, he can give her and they stay home. They don't mind staying at home. No, we need a man who is responsible, who would take the lead, who would work and work hard and earn lawful earning to provide for his wife, to be protective, to provide for his future children, not to be lousy. So this is very important, Sister Kifaya. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahmed from Kenya. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Brother Ahmed? Alhamdulillah, Sheikh, I am fine. How are you doing too? Wonderful. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Okay, thank you. Uh, my question is, when breaking fast, we are advised according to Sunnah that we have to eat deaths according to all the numbers. Okay. Are we sinful if we do it in even way, or does it have any harm or ruin our fasts if we? If I got your question, Afi you Ahmed from much. Kenya. No, the Sunnah is to eat them with one or three or five. Why, if I didn't pay attention, or I, I was just too, too hungry and I ate four or six or eight, it's halal. It won't have any harm or any effect. It is the preference to eat them with. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Noor from Kenya, Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, uh, my question is uh, This is Noreen from Kenya. Noreen, okay, welcome to ask yeah. the Sister Noreen. Go ahead. Noreen from Kenya. I'm from Kenya. I'm Noreen. Okay, got your name and where are you from? What is your question, Noreen from Kenya?
Go ahead, Sister Noreen. We hear you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My question is, my son is in Canada. He's going to study in Canada. Um, and uh, he found a job as a student. He was working part time. So the job was to sell credit cards. Okay. He went for training like two, three days. And then he went for work. The first day he went for work, he also sold a credit card. The second day we realized that it must be haram because credit card, uh, I mean, they deal in interest and all. So he left the job the same day. Like he trained three days and he worked for a day. And the second day, as we realized, it just clicked that it must be haram. So he left the job. Now, when he went for training, for like three days, and he went to work for a day, he earned some money from that job. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I wonder if that money is haram, what should we do with that? Well, you didn't tell me the nature of the job, Sister Noreen. The job has credit card, or do people deal with a credit card, but what, what kind of job is it? I can't hear you, really. Let me join you on Facebook Live so I can hear you properly, please. Okay, sure. Uh, are you still online? Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullah from France. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Sister Rahma wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Huda. Ramadan Mubarak, Sheikh. Barakallahu feek. Thank you so much. Same to you. Okay. Sheikh, my question is, um, when one uh, has a relationship with the husband, like intercourse with the husband, and uh, then you take your janaba, and then later on, maybe after two hours or three hours, you have already started fasting, and then you see your, the, the cement from your husband coming out. Do you need to take your janaba again or should you just uh, do your wudu and continue your fasting no sister okay, sister rahma question. sister rahma if you can hear me can you hear me yes yeah okay just the person need to wash their private and make wudu and that's it there is no need to perform another ghusl thank you sister rahma from uh, france assalamu alaikum muad from singapore assalamu alaikum how are you? Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Muaz. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh, first of all, I have a suggestion that if you happen to uh, plan to come to Singapore, then please inform on the Facebook page so that we can all benefit, inshallah. Sure, inshallah. So you're going to prepare the durian inshallah. for me. Durian, durian, right? Sorry, Sheikh. So you will, pre you will prepare the durian for me. Inshallah, inshallah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> okay, go ahead. What is your question, Mohan? Uh, Sheikh, yeah, I, I would be going to India, inshallah, on the night of 29th of Ramadan of Singapore. No. And in India, uh, I would be reaching the next day. But in India, it would be the 20th of Ramadan, uh, I mean, the next morning. So what do I do if the moon is sighted on the 30th of Ramadan in India? So should I fast 31 days in total? Because... In, in Singapore, we are fasting a day before uh, the day it started in India. Okay, got your question. Okay. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hakim from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, Hakim. Hakim. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, thank you for asking. Go ahead, Hakim. Um, Sheikh, uh, first, I wanted to thank you, and I wanted to thank uh, Huda, and if you could give my thanks to Sheikh Asim Al-Hakim too, because uh, you've helped me a lot, and uh, you are you are the main reason that Allah has given me Hidayah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And... Uh, and I have two questions, Sheikh. Go ahead. So, um, my first question is, a while ago, Sheikh, uh, I had a non-Muslim over at my house. 
and uh, I had a Muslim friend there as well. And I told them to wait. I'm going to go pray and come back. And then the non-Muslim tells me that he wants to pray as well. Mm. So he, he believes in God, but he doesn't believe in a religion. Mm. So um, my, my, Muslim, my Muslim friend says that he can't pray. And then I said, no, go ahead and <clears throat> pray. Because I said, you know, maybe Allah will give him hidayah, like it will soften his heart. So I told him to do wudu and he prayed with us. Mm. But now I, I was looking things up and I see maybe that he shouldn't have prayed with us because he's not Muslim. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know, was I wrong in doing this and what should I have done? Okay. No, you were right. You were very right. A lot of times we have guests and they say, do you, you want to experience? A uh, lot of times we have guests, non-Muslims, and they say, do you want to experience our worship? So we invite them. This is how we make wudu and this is how we pray. They even fast. And many of them, they end up saying, like I had some guests from many European countries. So every time, you know, I'm going to the masjid, I take them with me. They were not praying, but they loved it. They said that this is the most peace of mind we have experienced. They all agreed. So this is an introduction to actually entering into the deen of Allah, <coughs> recognizing the oneness of Allah. You know, obviously those who are these, they believe in lordship, but they don't believe in religion. Yani they don't believe in uluhiya, in the unity of worship. They believe that there is God, but they don't worship him. Okay, they don't want this God to tell them what to do. They are a lot easier than the atheists. So the deists are easier than the atheists who dismiss entirely the presence and the fact that there is God. So if any person is asking to join in, to learn, or to experience, we should welcome them. We should bring them forward. And even if they didn't ask, and we have a chance to invite them over, we do. We open our houses, our masajid, for people to know to the best of our ability. So you didn't do anything wrong. If they accept faith afterward, they believe in Allah, Alhamdulillah, it did work. Otherwise, they remain in a state of, uh, you know, disbelief and that is their choice he did not really lose much what, ha what happened is if he didn't do it you missed an opportunity of introducing people to the deen and bringing people closer to Allah to recognize him uh, <clears throat> sister Kifaya from Nigeria as well as sister Rajdia from Sri Lanka they, they both have some questions Kifaya asked about organ donations and then she spoke about kidney liver etc and now Rujdiya asked about sperm donation first of all with regards to the sperm donation is absolutely forbidden and this is gonna be similar to fornication even though there is no intercourse but this sperm belongs to a man who's not your spouse it shouldn't fertilize your egg. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, man saqa ma'uhu zar'a ghayrih. A person whose sexual discharge waters the field of another, of a woman who is married to somebody else, is accursed. So in this case, no, this is not permissible. If the husband cannot do it, and even in vitro, in this case, you have the choice. You can ask for separation. You can pick up a child from the orphan and raise him or her, okay? And you understand that you don't give them your last name, as you know. You adopt them, you take care of them, you bring them, and you'll be rewarded for that. But to take a sperm of a man who's not your husband, absolutely forbidden, even if the whole process is done in vitro. But Otherwise, organ donations such as one of the kidneys, if the kidney of this donor is compatible with a person who is on the verge of dying because both kidneys have failed, this is permissible, provided we ask the specialists, the nephrologists, the surgeons, the doctors, that the donor will not be affected. He will survive, he will be okay. And the person who is about to die will survive and he will help him out. 
Likewise with the rest of the organs. The scholars uh, mentioned the condition. It should be an organ which has similar to it and a person can live with one of them, like the kidneys. Or an organ which can, a piece of it, a part of it can be taken and a person would survive out of that and the donor will not be affected. La darara wa la darar. Harm should not be inflicted nor reciprocated and furthermore it should be done as mere donation. You don't sell any of your body parts. It is not a property to sell. Brothers and sisters, let's take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a few minutes for some more. Please stay tuned. Dear brothers and sisters, this is your program, Flashback. So we would like to know, Sheikh Rifat, what is the idea behind Flashback? So Flashback program is uh, stories from the past that will affect us in the rest of our life, inshallah. We want also to know one of the examples about the lessons that we're going to learn from. So some of these stories that we will have, inshallah, is like the story of Ibrahim ibn Adham, when the people came and asked him, why our dua is not answered. So he said that our hearts dies because of uh, 10 things happening in our life. These 10 things, inshallah, will be able to explain them and narrate them to you during this program, inshallah. So dear brothers and sisters, don't miss this opportunity of watching the program of Flashback. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa my name is John Fontaine and we'd just like to invite you for, for the brand new series to Huda TV this Ramadan and the series is called Judaism and Christianity in the Light of Islam. Throughout this series we're going to be discussing the Islamic perspective of revelation, the Islamic perspective of the people of the book, the people of the book from the time of the original prophets, also the people of the book at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the people of the book of today. We're going to be discussing the books that they have. We're also going to be discussing some of the interactions of the Prophet وسلم, that he had with some of the kings around Arabia and also some of the tribes within Arabia. We're also going to be mentioning some authentic stories, authentic hadith regarding people of the book from the past. Make sure you join us this Ramadan on Huda TV for Judaism and Christianity in the light of Islam. وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ فَأَيَّ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ تُنْكِرُونَ In Quran Circle 5, we will focus on the universal signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mentioned in the Quran. The universal signs, the favors of Allah, the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. The 
the wisdom behind the mention of many of the universal signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran is to establish the evidence of the tawheed, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to fill the hearts with these evidences, with these signs, so the hearts will be full of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the deeds that fill these hearts with the love of Allah, the hope for the rewards from Allah, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> We know the creation of Allah, the heavens, the earth, what's in between, but there is nothing like the book of Allah, the speech of Allah, to describe to us the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Join us in Quran Surah Al Fayt. We listen to the verses of the Quran, we reflect upon the meanings of these verses, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who have the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the second segment of today's program, Ask Uda. We have some callers. Rahma from Denmark. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Sister Rahma. It's very, very hard to hear you. <laughs> you don't have to hear me. Go ahead and present your question. You would hear okay. the answer later. Um, well, I'm calling on behalf of my children because they want to know the ruling about nail polish, if you can make wudu when you have nail polish on, and also if you can pray with nail polish, or if you have the fake nails or the glue for the fake nails, what is the ruling on this? Got your question. Thank you, sister. Rahma from Denmark. Assalamu alaikum. Ali from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, brother Ali. Go ahead, Ali. Ali, Assalamu Alaikum. Go ahead, present your question. What do you have in mind? Um, I have a question. I know you do. Go ahead. So my mom has uh, this salon and um, she's, um, she sells mugs and like toys and they're, they're like, they're shaped like a dog. I wonder where, I was wondering like we can sell them in our house or if we have to keep them like out of them. Because I know that we can't have dogs in the house. So she sells what? Dogs? She sells pets and dogs? Ceramic mugs. Cer ceramic mugs. Ceramic. And toys. Oh, ceramic mugs. Okay. So, ceramic mugs, which look like pets or animals. So, some of them, they look like dogs. Am I correct? Okay. So, we can't have them in the house? The mug, not the dog. I, I got your question. And let me see if I, uh, uh, if I got it right. Ali is saying that his mom sells mugs. Those mugs look like animals or shaped on the image of certain animals, like dogs. We see that. So I hope I understood you correctly. You're asking whether it's okay to keep those mugs at home which look like dogs. If this is your question, confirm, please. I would, I would answer it either way, if this is the question or otherwise. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Asiya from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I have one request mm -hmm. and one question. Go ahead. First, a small request that Sheikh, please don't stop your teaching in English on an official page because we need that also. If you wish, you can uh, start with Arabic, but please don't stop in English. Okay. okay Sheikh. And uh, this, uh, the question is, 
that if I want to donate uh, uh, my money to Khuda and I want to give oh, some amount to the staff, the brothers, uh, I don't know if sisters are working on that, I don't know, uh, some amount just uh, just uh, for a, just to share some the sweets of Ramadan. Uh, so how how can I mention it that in that uh, money when I send and how what what should I do it? Because that is just saying that sent to PayPal and that much of my amount. So how can I mention it? Shall okay. I call it to you and send? I, please uh, send me the detail regarding that. Jazakallah khair. Sister Asya, thank you so much. First of all, when I uh, when I posted that, I'm really seriously thinking about making a broadcast in Arabic on my page. I did not mean at all that I will stop the English. I wish I can speak multiple languages to reach out to more and more people. But I thought of, because when I give the dars in Arabic in the masjid, and I, I see, mashallah, the crowd, so I decided to magnify the benefit and go live meanwhile. So hopefully, inshallah, we don't have to stop the English. But meanwhile, we'd like to also broadcast in, in Arabic. Or I would even uh, create a new page uh, exclusively for Arabic. Thank you, Sister Asya. As far as any contribution and support that any of the viewers want to uh, give to Huda TV, to its programs, or to the staff, that is really appreciated, obviously, by Allah and uh, by us. Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah and by the viewers. The programs which you're watching right now were the result of Allah's help. He sent somebody to sponsor those programs. You see, we're going live almost every day, mashallah. We produced about seven new programs before Ramadan. All of that, some people sponsor programs, supported that financially. So if you call back, one of the control will give you the bank account or the procedures. And then you specify, you say, you want to direct this to this program, to the program or to the crew, whatever you like, inshallah. Same applies to all the viewers who are interested in sharing their word and supporting uh, Huda TV and its programs. Huda TV, this is, mashallah, our 16th year, is a non-profit channel. We do not make profit out of producing programs or sending them. It is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you guys were to know how much it costs to run the channel, you would say, subhanallah, we should expand. We should have more channels like this. But the ummah and those who have a uh, yani, lot of money, unfortunately, are negligent of their duties. A channel like that should be sponsored by a country, by a state, by a government, so that we don't have to ask people for it. Uh, but unfortunately, this is not happening. So by the will and the grace of Allah, it is the viewers who are doing their job. May Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ashfaq from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, brother Ashfaq. Thank you so much and thank you for it's waiting for so long. long since I spoke to you. I know we have half month past, but you know, it's better late than never. I just wanted to say Ramzan Mubarak to you Baraka and all our brothers and sisters in Islam. Thank you so much. And it's never too late. And may Allah accept all our good deeds. I mean, I mean, I mean. Go ahead, brother Ashfaq. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Zana wa yakum. Thank you so much. You know, when somebody just calls to uh, wish us uh, a happy and blessed Ramadan or to pray for the channel and for its staff, that really means a lot to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of you brothers and sisters. Mu'ad from uh, Singapore. If you started fasting in any country, then you're traveling to another country a day or two before Ramadan. And then due to the moon citation in the second country of your final destination was not cited yet. Fast with them. Oh, but Sheikh, it will mean that I will end up fasting 31 days. It's okay. Fast with them. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Sumu li ru'yatih wa aftiru li ru'yatih. You begin fasting when the moon is sighted. So you're in Singapore, the moon was sighted on that day. So you fast with the Muslim ummah. Then you travel to another country where the moon was not sighted, like in Singapore, for Shawwal, for Eid. It was delayed a day or even two. Fast with them. 
because you cannot break your fast and celebrate Eid until the moon of Shawwal is been sighted. Likewise, if the moon was sighted a day earlier, so you ended up fasting only 28 days or 27 days, that's fine. Break your fast with them because it's Eid in your final destination and it's haram to fast on that day. Then after Eid, you can make up this day or two that you missed to complete the number of days. Barakallahu feekum, Mu'ad. Akhi uh, Abdul Razak from Uganda, he asked a question, he said that, how come Allah says in Surah Maryam something and in Surah Al-Imran something else? You know, we all know that the birth of Jesus, peace be upon him, was miraculous. Maryam, alayhi salam, peace be upon her, was a chess woman and she's the best of all women and she gave a miraculous birth to Jesus, peace be upon him, to Isa salam, without being touched by a man. That is mentioned in the Quran, is mentioned in Surah Maryam, a whole chapter which is named after Mary, Jesus' mother, peace be upon her, and is also mentioned in the story of Ali Imran, where again the surah, Surah Ali Imran, a long surah, chapter number three, is named after the Maryam, Maryam's family, the family of Imran. So if you examine the ayat, you will find that there is a harmony and there is no conflict whatsoever. In, in, in Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا سَوِيًّا So we sent to her Jibreel alayhi salam, الروح الأمين, okay? The honest, trustworthy spirit, Ruh Jibreel alayhi salam. And he appeared to her as a human being. And then, when she was afraid, he said, don't be afraid. إِنَّمَا أَنَا رَسُولُ رَبِّكِ I'm just the messenger of your Lord. لِأَهَبَ لَكِ غُلَامًا زَكِيًّا To grant you by the leave of Allah, an honorable and a beautiful purified boy, baby boy. Yani she, she will conceive. But was that the first visit? Nope. Now we go to Surah Ali Imran. And in Surah Ali Imran, it tells us the preparations because this miraculous event is unprecedented. Yes, we have Adam was created parentless. We have Eve was created motherless. She was not in a womb whatsoever. She came from the rib of Adam. And then, to complete the image and the picture, a human being is coming to the world fatherless. Could this happen? All by the leave of Allah. Allah named Isa alayhi salam kalimah, a word. Innama amruhu idha arada shay'an an yaqula lahu kun fayakun. The word is kun, be. So he said to marry to be pregnant, to conceive without being a man, with a man, and she did conceive. Who delivered the bishara? Jibreel alayhi salam. So that was one angel. Oh, okay. But when we go to Surah Al Imran, and it says, Al Malaika, Al Malaika, Al Malaika. If you examine those ayat, like if you examine ayah number uh, 42 and 44 of Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3. In 42, wa it qalat al Malaika tu ya Maryam inna Allah ustafaki wa tahharaki. Remember when the angels said to Mary, she was still young and she did not conceive yet. She was being looked after by Zachary, Prophet Zachary in Jerusalem. So the angels came to her and they spoke to her. Maryam, you got to understand that Allah chose you. Taharaki purified you. Istafaki ala nisa'il alameen. He made you superior to the rest of the women of the world. So we, what you need to do is اقنوتي, اسجدي, اركعي. They inspired her to be a devout worshipper. Then when we jump into 45, إذ قالت الملائكة, 45 of the same chapter. Now, a year later, they came to her with the bishara. Now you have become a devout worshipper. Now you receive the fruits of the summer in the winter and the fruits of the winter in the summer, even though Zechariah, uh, to the extent that Zechariah is surprised, now you're ready. إِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكِ بِكَلِمَةٍ مِّنْهُ اسْمُهُ الْمَسِيحُ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمُ So the angels, bunch of angels, plural, that is correct, came to her. And they said, you know what? Allah is giving you a glad tiding that one day you will have a son. By his word, by Allah's word, bi kalimatim minhu. 
His name will be the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary. He doesn't have a father. وَجِهَمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْأَخِرَةِ وَنُمْقَرَّبِينَ Admiring the baby who will become later on a prophet by the leave of Allah. So now it's the angels, the angels, the angels. Whenever it was the right time to execute this command in ayah number 17 and ayah number 19 of Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا When it was the time to execute this command of Allah, He sent Jibreel alayhi salam by himself. So there is no conflict. And there are stages and steps have been fulfilled between this surah and this surah. I hope the meaning is clear. I think I did answer all the questions. I hope so. Because we ran out of time. Uh, otherwise, inshallah, 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 expect us tomorrow the same time, an hour earlier, 5 p.m. Mecca time to answer more and more of your questions. May Allah guide us to what is best. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Allah is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Allah is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech.